In this video, I will show you how you can draw out the loanable funds market and what impact additional government spending has on this market. So let's start by putting a simple graph of the loanable fund market, which looks exactly the same as almost any standard demand and supply graph. So we have the two axes. Now the vertical axis here will show us the interest rate and the horizontal axis will show us the quantity of loanable funds. We have a demand and we have a supply. Now the question is what is demand and supply in this loanable fund market? Let's start with the supply. This is a very special market because the supply is households. Who's providing funds to the market? One important thing about the loanable funds market is it only looks at the private loanable funds. It does not look at public loanable funds. So who is supplying funds to the loanable funds market? The basic idea here is um, if I don't spend all my income, I save some of it. Whatever I save, I put in a bank account or in a stock market or in the bond market. If I put my money into the stock market, bond market, or in the bank account, these funds are available for firms to borrow. And that's exactly the loanable funds. So anything I save as a household or as a consumer is immediately a loanable fund because somebody else can then take these funds and spend them to buy a machine, um, to buy a factory, to build something, and then give me a return on my savings. So, and we can see here in the graph, the return on the savings gives us the interest rate, and then we have here a quantity as well. So we have drawn the standard loanable funds market. We talked about supply, that's households. Households, saving. Now that we know that supply is savings by households, we need to see what shifts supply. So these are any factors shifting the savings behavior of households, which is not the interest rate. Because if we change the interest rate, we move along the supply curve. But if we shift something around that shifts the savings behavior of households, then we shift supply. One example of such a shift in the savings behavior of households is tax incentives. If the government suddenly decides that you exempt savings from taxation or you increase the taxes on uh, any savings you might have then that will have an immediate impact on how much you decide to save. There's another very specific factor shifting supply and that is government spending. Now how does this work? Well we have this loanable funds market which is the private loanable funds market meaning money available to firms to invest. This implies that the government's not part of this market directly. However, we know one specific feature of the government. The government is assumed to have the safe asset, which means if I want to save, I first give my money to the government. Because I know if I give my money to the government, I get my return and it's secure. If I give my money to a company, well, they might default. So I might lose my money. So I'm not necessarily as willing to give them the money. Because of that, it is assumed in this model that any funds the government wants are immediately satisfied by households and that will cause supply to shift. Because again, this is the private market, not the public. This brings us to the second curve, which is demand. So what is demand? Well, demand is anybody that needs funds for investment. Assume a, a company wants to build a new machine or buy a new machine, which can then increase profitability and in what it produces. That's the type of investment we think here. The company doesn't have the money laying around, so it needs to go to the market and borrow. And where does it borrow? In the loanable funds market. So it's essentially borrowing and saving. Supply is whoever saves. Demand is whoever wants to borrow money. Now what does affect demand, well that's relatively similar to supply. Anything that affected savings affected supply. Anything that affects borrowing affects demand. Now again, the interest rate is exempt. So if I change the interest rate, uh, we move along the demand curve. But if we change 
tax incentives for research and development, for example, then we shift the demand curve. Okay, let, now that we know how this market works broadly, let's look at government spending. Now let's assume the government increases its spending, meaning G goes up, government spending. How does the government finance its government spending? It issues new government bonds. The assumption here is clearly the government increases spending and does not increase taxes alongside with it, and the government does not print money alongside with it. The way the government increases its spending is by issuing debt. And that debt can then be bought by households. So if you go to here the loanable funds market, what will happen is if government spending increases, then households are able to save using government bonds. And households want to save using government bonds rather than going to the private market here and then give the money to firms which potentially have some risk attached to it, whereas the government has no risk attached to it in this model. So what we then know is, well, if households then give some of their money to the government, there's not as much money available anymore to give to firms. So we have supply shifting to the left. And if you have supply shifting to the left, we have a reduction in loanable funds and we have a higher interest rate. So this means if governments increase their spending, households will give the money immediately to the government and will not lend as much to firms. So will not save as much and make funds available for firms, which will cause the supply of loanable funds to go to the left, which means that the quantity of loanable funds in the equilibrium uh, goes down and the market interest rate goes up. This causes a so-called crowding out effect. Why? As the government increases spending, the interest rate for the private sector goes up. And as the interest rate for the private sector goes up, the private sector will borrow less money. So we'll do less investment, we'll build less factories, we'll buy less machines and increase its production by less uh, because it will have lower investment. Thank you for watching.